Hello, my friends. It's been a little while. I'm back with another solo episode on the Astro Bloom podcast. So welcome back. I hope you're doing well after eclipse season. We are in the last few days of Scorpio season, and it might already be Sagittarius season when you're listening to this. Um, I I took a little trip to Scotland to visit my best friend uh, in October and it was beautiful and, and a really great time to visit Scotland because it wasn't super busy. And of course it was very witchy, which I really liked. It was a, a great inspiration leading up to Samhain. And then uh, after that, I've just been really busy working on lunar astrology foundations for you guys, uh, which is really going to be the most comprehensive, uh, but really digestible guide uh, to bring the cosmos down to earth. So it's for the beginner or for someone who is more seasoned in astrology, but really just wants like one place where everything is really put together, organized. And this of course, isn't just, you know, a course where you memorize things, it's completely immersive. And it is also a personal like transformation journey. So there's lots of different guidebook or workbooks, uh, cheat sheets. There's some energy activations and meditations for you guys, tons of journal prompts and things like that. So it's actually live right now and spots are limited to 10 participants at a time. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's just launching literally today as I'm talking about this. So as I'm recording this episode anyway, so, uh, yeah. I hope that you guys will join me on this 18-week journey. It's a self-study program, so it's totally at your own pace, but you definitely get some support from me one-on-one and, of course, from an online community through Teachable. So you'll find all the information in the show notes, but I just want to mention that there is an early bird offer that expires at midnight on November 21st. So without that, Uh, with all of that behind us, I really want to get into uh, an interesting but sort of pretty large topic today of how astrology actually helped me regulate my nervous system and sort of heal childhood trauma. So first of all, I want to talk about, you know, what is trauma? Because I think some people hear the word trauma and they think, that it has to be something hugely tragic that happened. And of course, it can be that. Now, at the same time, uh, trauma can also just be as simple as something that shouldn't have happened, that did, or should have happened and didn't. And this is something that Dr. Gabor Mate, who's one of my favorite teachers on this topic, talks about and puts in such concise, beautiful words. But essentially what it what it means is, you know, trauma can be as simple as not having, you know, your needs met in some way. And because most of our, you know, nervous system conditioning um, happens between the ages of zero and seven, this is where we learn a lot of, you know, how to respond to life, how to seek attachment, how to seek connection, how to be in relationship. Uh, that's not to say that, you know, trauma can't happen later on in life, but uh, this is really why I love to focus on a lot of inner child healing because this is this is where it begins. So. In my own journey, uh, as you've probably heard me share, you know, many times, um, when I found out about my moon sign in astrology, it really led me, well, first of all, this happened, you know, during a phase in my life where I felt completely disconnected from myself. I felt like I was living, you know, someone else's life. I had been sort of, uh, I had driven myself to a burnout because I was really disconnected from my feminine energy um, and just sort of really in this like stuck in these people pleasing tendencies uh, to the point where yeah I woke up one day and I was like whose life am I even living like I don't feel like I'm doing any of this for me I'm doing it for other people I'm doing it because first of all I've been thought taught that you know happiness comes from 
a secure nine to five job and I'm going to, you know, I'm not supposed to be fulfilled at my career and all that matters is physical security. And of course I went to school because it was, it was the thing to do and it was what was expected of me. Um, and yeah, I woke up one day and I was like, what the hell am I doing? And at that point I just went into such a dark place. It was definitely my dark night of the soul. And it's really where astrology helped me so much. It helped me get out of that like survival mode because I, when I found out about my moon sign, so for those of you that don't know, I'm a Virgo sun and Pisces moon. And I found myself really like always being super rewarded for like that Virgo sun, right? Like being hardworking, being really analytical, being really like discerning um, and, and all of that. But the Pisces moon just wanted like play. It wanted um, to, to sort of have a, a spiritual side, to have a more mystical side. It needed to feel uh, it, it, it's really empathetic, right? It took on a lot of stuff from other people, but at the same time, one of the shadow aspects of my moon sign of the sign Pisces in general is this like victimhood, self-sacrifice, martyrdom type energy. And so what it actually really led me to do because I was living in the shadow expression of this energy is I, first of all, escaped so I was very much like in that flight response of numbing out, you know, uh, drinking, using drugs, stuff like that, partying, just disassociating um, because it just felt too painful to, to be the way that I was, you know, living. Um, and it also led me to, yeah, try to sort of manage the expectations of everyone else. Um, and then basically try to meet, meet their needs as opposed to my own needs. And what this led to was essentially me then being really resentful and then feeling like a victim in my own life. And so this was, this was essentially, you know, not just my own trauma response because, my upbringing really taught me that, you know, achievement was everything and that it didn't really matter what I wanted um, or, you know, art didn't matter. uh, Creativity didn't matter. It was just like, um, it was just like being, you know, having physical, the having like the physical resources to survive. Right. And emotions weren't really, received they weren't really um yeah emotional vulnerability wasn't really a thing in my family we don't, we're eastern european we don't talk about emotions we don't talk about how we feel so all of this to say not only was it in my own experience that it came up that way but it also was um you know in it and i've come to realize it's also like a a deeply ingrained ancestral pattern uh, for me. So there's a lot of sort of self-sacrifice and victimhood and martyrdom, especially from women in my family. And all of this is kind of embedded in that uh, fawning or people-pleasing trauma response that we can often get stuck in if, you know, if this was our dynamic growing up. So basically what um, astrology in this sense taught me is I was able to regulate my nervous system through really connecting to the energy of my moon sign. And for those of you that might be new to the podcast, you know, I I have a line of physical uh, tools and, and of course I work through yoga and through energy healing uh, to help people take care of themselves through astrology. And until recently, when I took on some somatic embodiment and regulation strategies training that is trauma-informed, I didn't really have the words to to explain, you know, why I went down this path. Uh, But I now realize that focusing on the moon sign 
uh, and essentially allowing myself to connect to this more mystical, empathetic, creative side of self uh, using um, especially like nature and spirituality as a, as a mode of healing and a mode of essentially being able to regulate my nervous system is, you know, is how I really healed that inner child or how I am healing that inner child, because I truly believe the work is, is never fully done. And yeah, this is, um, this is all just kind of come into realization, but it actually goes so much deeper than this. So what I wanted to discuss with you is, you know, the fact that, uh, First of all, trauma, like I said, can be as simple as you not having your emotional needs met. So for me, I actually needed, you know, throughout my life, not just in my upbringing, but just throughout my life, I needed people to, to allow or to give me permission to be in that flow, right? Not have to always uh, be doing something to be productive. I, I needed people to, you know, not just sort of allow me to sacrifice and uh, and and people please and and I needed someone to encourage me to you know stand up for myself maybe and really connect to that more mystical side of self and I, my spirituality or my interest in spirituality and art and all of that really needed to be cultivated and so what I started doing was I started following these things that I was passionate about I started really connecting back to that inner child to like what she was curious about, what she liked, you know, uh, and I started taking care of myself through these rituals and spiritual practices and my connection to nature. And well, what, what trauma really does is it actually um, decreases our window of tolerance. And what the window of tolerance really is, in simple terms, what it means is sort of this window of how activated or triggered we can be by some kind of external event um, and sort of how we then respond to that trigger. So, you know, for me, one of my triggers is sort of, is like, I really need a sense of harmony in my environment. Uh, I can be easily triggered by even just like a messy house because I feel like I can't think straight. I can be easily triggered by conflict uh, because it was just something that I learned, you know, wasn't a good thing. It didn't lead to good things. And so I kind of avoid that at all costs. So because trauma actually lowers this window of tolerance we can just sort of have a, an essential like tiny sniff that you know conflict is impending and uh then we we immediately react from this like inner child state so we almost revert to that like you know five-year-old self that's why often you know in an intimate relationship especially because they're the biggest sort of um opportunities for healing these types of things we can yeah, revert back to that, like really, you know, inner child state. And, and that's where we kind of escalate into either that flight response, fight response, freeze response, or just sort of complete shutdown. And so when we are in the flight, fight, or freeze response, we tend to live in this kind of like higher uh, anxiety, um, stress state, when we are in that shutdown phase, it's more like in that depressive type state. But both of these states and the reason why we want to regulate our nervous system, why we want to increase our window of tolerance, um, both of these states actually um, have an impact on our physical health because it is actually our physiological body, bodily responses and functions that respond to our emotions through the nervous system. So what this means is that when you are feeling triggered, you go into this conditioned response, you feel a certain emotion arising, and then because maybe you weren't taught how to deal with that emotion, it can potentially stagnate in the body. And then we have this like energetic stagnation, right? And we have a coping behavior that we then use that we probably learned through our experience. So 
it usually is whatever worked in the past, or sometimes it's like what we wish we would have done. So for me, for example, I tend to go into flight. So I sense that there is a conflict arising. And before the conflict even has the chance to arise, I tend to go into flight. And so this means I feel like I want to run away. I want to escape. I want to numb out. I disassociate. Maybe I want to binge watch, you know, Netflix. I want to smoke a joint, whatever it might be. And that's how I kind of deal with it. Or that's how I used to deal with it. The more healed version of me does not deal, deal with it that way. But essentially what happens, you know, when we, when we are bouncing back and forth between like fight, flight, freeze, or complete shutdown is we have heightened states of inflammation in our bodies. We have high blood pressure. We live in these disharmonious uh, physiological states because our physiological responses respond to the emotions that we are feeling because our emotions essentially tell our nervous system what to do. And so this is a hugely important factor because it tells us that actually our emotional well-being is at the root of our physical well-being. And so even if you are working out, if you are eating well, if you are taking care of your physical body, you're using, you know, all organic products on your skin and you're only eating organic food and all of these things. If you are not taking care of your nervous system, if you are not taking care of your emotional well-being, if you're not making sure that your emotional needs are met by getting acquainted with your moon sign, and getting acquainted with your inner child, getting acquainted with how you process emotions, you're fighting against yourself. You're not helping your case here. And so this is just, you know, again, it's a, it's a big topic to talk about and to really break down, especially if you're not familiar with, you know, polyvagal theory and, and sort of uh, more trauma type terms, but this is me trying to put it into simpler terms for you. So the other thing I wanted to mention here is uh, the, the fact that our natal mercury sign as well can be quite involved in this process um, as well. So while the moon rules over emotions, how we process our emotions, how we experience them, and these more like habitual conditioned responses, um, and therefore determine sort of those uh, emotional states that we tend to, to go towards, uh, Mercury is actually really important in this as well, because Mercury is uh, sort of the bridge uh, between our external environment and our internal environment, our our inner self, that more hidden self that the moon represents. And not only that, but Mercury as the messenger of the gods, right, is this messenger between realms. And he's also the messenger between uh, spirit, our spirit, our soul, our more like eternal self represented by the sun sign. And that inner self, that, uh, that, that moon or lunar self, that part of us that is actually our personality, the lens and the mirror that reflects our actual eternal sun self. So the, the Mercury is actually the key through which we can ensure that uh, these two aspects of self are on the same page. Because the moon doesn't have its own light, it reflects the light of our sun, our life purpose. It tells us how we live out our life purpose in our daily life. And if our moon self is dysregulated, right? If, if we're living in that more shadow expression of the moon sign, we are not allowing our light, our life force energy to actually be on the same page as our personality is how we show up in the world. And Mercury plays a role in this because Mercury actually rules the nervous system. So 
in our charts, Mercury is that key aspect that tells us how we sort of process sensory input from our environment and then how that affects our, again, habitual response, right? So what happens is oftentimes our Mercury sign can actually tell us you know, what we are maybe seeking in the environment or what our potential triggers might be. So I'll give you an example of this using my own chart. Uh, my Mercury is uh, retrograde in Libra. And my, like, like I said, my moon sign is in Pisces. Now for me, I tend to, like I said, there's this like conflict aversion, right? And if we think about the shadow aspect of Libra, it is this tendency to be incredibly conflict averse. It's this tendency to people please. It's this tendency to always be focused on the other and sort of be monitoring, you know, how is the other feeling? Are we weighing the, are we balancing the scales here? And in the shadow expression, there can be this like a uh, self-abandonment that happens because we're trying to maintain balance. We're trying to maintain harmony in our environment. And, you know, this is very much something that I've dealt with a lot on my own healing journey is this tendency to people please, is this tendency to avoid conflict out of a fear of how that will impact, you know, other people in my life. And by being triggered um, through conflict or the perceived notion of conflict, what I would often find myself doing, again, is moving more into that flight response. Now, if you know the shadow tendencies of Pisces, that does tend to be disassociation. It tends to be like numbing out. It tends to be escaping. It tends to be running away, uh, disassociating from the body, from the present moment. And so in my own life, understanding astrology has been such an incredible tool to unpack some of these patterns in my life and begin to heal them because I have certain words to put to it and I understand the dynamics of the pattern and where it originated. And it's also given me the ability to understand, you know, what, what do I need to actually then self-resource and increase my window of tolerance and, um, you know, give myself, uh, the things that I, that I perhaps need and, uh, am or did, didn't get, you know, in the past in past experiences. And so by doing this, I've been able to find ways through connecting to my moon sign and understanding my Mercury. And of course, there's so many other aspects of my chart, but I'm just, you know, overly, overly simplifying this for you here just to paint uh, a picture. I've been able to find ways to take care of that inner child, to heal this pattern in my life and to be able to engage more readily in conflict, to say no, uh, to more, to set up, to set boundaries when I need to, uh, to tap into this more, you know, mystical side of self to understand how to regulate my emotions and how to give my inner child the love that, you know, she needs. So really, you know, without knowing it years ago, when I sort of started down this path of really connecting with that uh, lunar self initially through the moon sign and then obviously diving deeper into the chart and really beginning to heal that relationship with my inner child, uh, I unknowingly was, you know, healing my nervous system through all of these embodiment practices and this connection to spirituality and to mysticism. And so really, I wanted to share this story with you because uh, I felt like I finally maybe had some words to illustrate really what an impact this has had in my own life. And of course, in my clients' lives, you know, this is something that is theory that I've been working with, with some of my clients currently, and it's really, um, it's really proving to be incredibly effective. So I'm really excited to be able to put some words to it and to relate it 
into uh, another aspect of my training that I'm really, really passionate about, which is uh, bringing, you know, bringing it all back to the body. At the end of the day, um, you know, my Virgo sun and Pisces moon is that bridge between uh, the, like the mind and the body. It's that, it's that psychosomatic experience. And that has very much been my healing journey. If you've listened to some of my previous episodes, you know, I, uh, experienced so many somatic issues, uh, in my journey in sort of leading up to my dark night of the soul. And this all had to do with the fact that I was stuck in these patterns of like people pleasing perfectionism, uh, and like just holding so much, um, of this energy in my body to the point where it started showing up on a physical level. So it is truly my purpose in this life to help you bring the cosmos down to earth in a digestible, you know, comprehensive way and to help you embody the energy of the cosmos and to help you find harmony and find holistic healing through astrology, through plants, through planets, through the body as well. And I just wanted to really share this wisdom with you. And I hope that it helps you in some way. Uh, I know if you might be an astrology beginner and you're wondering like, what is my Mercury? What is my moon? And what does this mean? Uh, It's of course a lot to unpack, you know, in one episode to go through all these placements. And so what I would encourage you to do uh, is first of all, if you're interested in learning astrology yourself, I would highly recommend that you take advantage of the early bird offer, which is ending, like I said, at midnight on November 21st and uh, sign up for this 18 week journey. I promise you, you will learn so much about yourself and you'll really feel empowered through understanding this language, which is quite honestly, it's a lifelong journey of unpacking your own chart and using it as such an empowering tool for self-mastery and transformation and if you're not uh if you're thinking the course isn't really the right fit for you and you just want some more like hands-on one-on-one support then i do highly recommend that we sit down for a free discovery call you can book that through the show notes uh and we talk about you know how where where you're at right now what your issues are and see how i might be able to help you Uh, I do have one spot available um, to start at the end of this year or beginning of 2024 for a three-month or six-month mentorship container. And of course, we use astrology, we use plants, we use energy healing, we use all sorts of different embodiment practices in this work. And I would love to chat with you. So feel free to book a discovery call. And let me know if you have any questions, thoughts, comments. Uh, I always love to hear from you. My DMs on Instagram are open and you can also find my email in the show notes. Thank you and have a lovely day.